Good evening, everyone. Sunday evening, and it's going to be really special at ADU. I, Chaitali Bhak, from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe, based out of Cyprus, welcome you all to the chat room. As we enter the Women's Week, the celebration begins with a discussion on the historic decision taken by Ministry of Defense, Government of India, to permit women entry into the National Defense Academy. NDA will no longer be a training academy for boys who aspire to enter the armed forces of India, but will also become alma mater of girls who become future officers of the defense forces. And today we have with us Lieutenant Commander Bidisha Pandey, who is a former naval officer, and Ragini Kapoor, an aspiring student who will take the entrance test for the first batch to enter NDA to talk about this most passionate subject with women in India. We have Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe to take the discussion forward. Welcome ladies. We will enjoy this discussion for sure. Thank you very much, Atali. Wonderful, you know, a day which is going to be a really a matter of pride for ADU because we are a women-centric organization. And in an organization which is absolutely run by women, we have today two women, one who's been a part of the armed forces, one who wants to be a part of the armed forces. And there's nothing more exciting than this fact that a dream which we had when we were growing up is now fortified. And we now have, you know, the NDA opening its gates to women. I'm sure it'll be a pleasure for our future generation of girls to have this extremely wonderful option of a career to choose from. And so I welcome a former Naval officer, Lieutenant Commander Vidisha Pandey. Hi, Vidisha, welcome. Vidisha is joining us from England. She's in London and post her Navy, she's doing her MBA from England. And hi, Ragini. Ragini is a class 12 student preparing for the boards, preparing for all the other careers and has suddenly found that she's in uh, the middle of something very exciting because now she has a very major career option of joining the armed forces from joining the ND. So now we start this conversation. I'll start the conversation with the younger one. Ragini, how does it feel? How does it feel to be going to be a part of it if you pass the entrance test? So on September 2021, the Honorable Supreme Court made a new judgment that opened new doors for girls to be a part of NDA. So as a young aspirant, I was quite elated and thrilled that I could be a part of NDA, the armed forces, earlier than which was possible. Like earlier, the girls had to go uh, first complete their graduation and then they would, uh, they would be a part of the armed forces family. But now that NDA has opened the gates for girls earlier, I was quite thrilled that, uh, that now I could also apply and be a part of the armed forces. And now, uh, and uh, I, was, uh, I was quite um, amused that uh, now I can choose my career from such a bro uh, broad, uh, broad horizon and I have new opportunities. Oh, that's wonderful, Ragini. And I'm sure you are not only, not only amused, you're also elated because I can see that on your face, you know. So it's absolutely lovely. And Bidisha, how do you like that reaction of a young girl? I am so happy to see the happiness on her face. You know, just the excitement of uh, having the opportunity to join NDA. Uh, I think... Uh, it, it is going to be, uh, these girls are going to make history if they make it to NDA. And I really hope, Ragini, that you make it. Thank you. And so Ragini, uh, before we continue, I want to ask you, why, why have you chosen it? Why, and what, what made you feel that, yes, you wanted to be a part of it? Apart from the decision of the Supreme Court, that is fine. But they should also be, you know, because armed forces is not every child's cup of tea. So how did it become your cup of tea? So I feel we don't grow when things are easy. I feel we grow when we face challenges and uh, being uh, to be able to part to be able to be a part of NDA 
it was like i was quite fascinated by the way of self discipline and how they conduct themselves and 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 the effort and the hard work they put for our nation i always wanted to do something for our country so it was i was very thrilled that now i get to be a part yes i'm sure i'm sure you'll have to really study really hard for the entrance and you'll also have to be post the written test you have an ssb so we'll continue with this discussion by going over to vidisha vidisha how do how do these girls prepare uh for the nd entrance exam per se uh it would have the syllabus would have general knowledge and uh, english and other elements to it uh but that is like a, a written test like you would have written written examinations for most of the other uh, organizations in india uh what separates the military from the other organizations is of course the service selection board which is after the written entrance and i believe that is the most unique uh, entrance procedure to any organization uh, basically uh, it's a five day test and uh, i am elaborating here more on service selection board because yes i think uh, even after people clear the written entrance the, a major chunk doesn't make it if they are not able to clear the ssb which is a very thorough examination because <clears throat> it is five days of uh, interaction with the group task officer with the psychologist with uh, the interviewing officer and you undergo a lot of tests uh, which include physical tests and uh, there are these obstacle course tests uh, tests and then there are psychological tests you are interviewed so over a course of 5 days your personality is assessed your leadership qualities are assessed and on the basis of that the selection is made so uh, yes to generally when uh, i talk to people about ssp preparation i always uh, tell them to be themselves and to be confident and especially when it comes to the physical tasks i always tell them that you know they are not expecting you to complete it they are just looking for courage in you uh, whether you have it in you to take on the task whether you fail or do it is that secondary thing because i was also not very good with physical tasks when i had gone for ssb and i had my own apprehensions but uh, what they assess uh, majorly is your teamwork courage and confidence so i think that would be my tips for service selection board for nda entrance exam i think uh, it's just the study material and the preparation that you do for any other entrance uh, so that is how i would like to sum it up uh ragini see ma'am told you so much about how and what you what to expect and of course the waterloo is not written the waterloo is ssp now tell me one thing out of the three forces what is your option so i like army um uh, i would like to join the army uh, because i live in an awho society so i'm quite influenced by the army officers so yeah i would like to join the army right and you know when you join the army navy air force one very important factor is that you are also judged uh, in the psychology test for officer like qualities isn't it so bidisha yes the olqs what we olqs the yeah. officer like quality so will you be able to tell our girls here uh you know ragini on the panel and of course the girls who will see it there'll be a lot of young girls who will be seeing you so what are these olqs and how you know should they prepare for it or is it inherent are they born with it uh i'll be very honest here i'm a second generation officer my father uh was a serving officer in the army and he recently retired a few years ago so he told me that interestingly ssb is a personality test if you crack it then you are built for the military if you do not make it because there are even iitians who would not be able to crack ssb because they are looking for something else during the service selection board so my father deliberately told me just be yourself and be honest because this is more of a career fit test a personality assessment test don't try to fake at all in the service selection board because in the long run it is going to be uh, more harmful to you if you fake and try to make it you will not be able to make it by faking it in the first place <laughs> but 
if you even if you make it you would not like it so there are certain there's a lot of research there's a lot of work which has gone into formulating this particular service selection board and the way they assess people and that is why it is always better to be genuine confident and be your own true self during the service selection board and uh, of course when we talk about olqs i think uh, a lot of parameters were tested um, and you genuinely can't fake it because over a period of 5 days you are assessed on various parameters so it's not like one day you are being a great team player the next day you are not there has to be coherence in your performance uh, throughout those 5 days so uh, one of the interesting things is uh, uh, during the ssb like in one of the tasks they ask you to pick your teams like among the uh, uh, women who were there we had to pick our teams two women from uh, the other group to join you in the task and it was so interesting because we all met for the first time in during those five days and if you are picking someone that speaks volumes about that someone so i remember this particular thing because i was picked by seven women which is the highest number and uh, my group task officer actually in the end of the task was like vidisha why did they pick you do you know why so many of them picked you because you know you need to be a good team player and not really when the test is going on but even beyond the test hours when you are with the people when they feel they can trust you when they can when they know they can work with you so i did not even know about this when i went for the service selection board but uh, it is surprising in how many ways the uh, you know you are assessed and rest of it yes like i mentioned before the courage to take on tasks whether it is you know the burma bridge where there are like there is this 10 feet tall things and then you have to walk on one rope and hold the other rope on the top i had never done it but i did it on the day of the obstacle course i did that there was a tarzan jump where you have to you know hold the rope jump into a pit so i did not complete the task obviously i fell but then uh, i think what mattered was taking on the task because a lot of people did not even go in for it so they are not expecting you to be really uh, you know excellent at all of this and train and then come for long jump high jump all of this but you should have the determination the courage to do all of this so yes i think these were the few key parameters honesty of course i remember during the interview because the interview goes on mine went on for an hour and if you fake anywhere because it just is so circular that you would be caught in your own words if you try to give out some wrong information and uh, they twisted it turned it initially they would make you comfortable but then after that you know uh, they keep asking you different things different perspectives of course you need to know about the organization about a general uh, knowing about current affairs is important uh, knowing about why you want to join the services is important so all that was assessed during the uh, interview another very important thing i think was during the psychology test you know you are shown a uh, uh in you shown an image and you have to write a story about it in around i think 30 to 40 seconds or one minute and that really tests your psychology what do you make out of an image are you really a positive person do you see uh negativity in something or positivity in something how do you one of the images was just like a blank paper in my test so you could just write whatever comes to your mind thinking of that blank paper so that was very interesting so i think uh, i was not very sure uh, about joining the forces and i'll admit it today but then when i went for the service selection board i think i was really impressed by the way we were assessed in those 5 days and i really thought it is not one of those exams where you can take coaching and crack it they are really looking at uh, something which needs to be there in your personality right absolutely that was so wonderful you know i'm sure ragini is really understanding things which i feel she didn't know till now ragini when you decided to, uh, to you know take this entrance and you decided to fill the form so uh, what were the three qualities you felt you had which will make you a good uh, defense services officer i think self believe overcoming fear and yes honesty are the three traits in me that i felt uh, was you know uh, was uh, i kind of uh, wanted uh, like uh, the traits yeah. i had 
Yes, absolutely. So you felt you had them. Now, when you when you heard uh, Kam- uh, Lieutenant Commander Vidisha speaking, did you feel that uh, it's something which is very heavy? And uh, did it fear you? Did it bog you down? No, actually, it excited me after knowing all about the SSB interview. I was more intrigued that uh, you know I'm kind of excited that how it it will be. Uh, performed and how like uh, we will get to know ourselves much better by giving those uh, interviews also right absolutely uh, vidisha what is the career uh, plan which now these girls can make because when we were studying uh, we didn't have uh, girls except for uh, medical and nursing course and uh, when you came up you had girls but then you had them also in a limited number of spheres and cores of the army navy air force so uh, how do you think these girls can plan because now they they go through nda they will have a different plan uh, short term and long term both for themselves so can you just think about it and let us know as to what how they can plan i think uh, when this news came out that you know nda will be opening its gates for women uh, i was extremely happy because now you know a career in the armed forces would be a full fledged career for the women when i joined the armed forces i knew that you know it's going to be for 10 years maximum extendable up to 14 and uh, the pride the uniform and everything uh, aside but there are certain aspirations that one has in when it comes to career growth like i could never dream of becoming uh, the commanding officer i knew no matter how hard i work i will never become the commanding officer i'll never get the opportunity to be the chief some day or become an admiral some day i knew it and uh, this time when you uh, when you know nda opens its gates for women when you, uh, it really does offer you a level playing field now when for instance if ragini joins the nda she might as well aspire to become the chief of naval staff or chief of army staff because now it is a level playing field you are a permanent commission officer right from the beginning your aspirations are very different so in my case i always had to uh, plan in the back of my mind what am i going to do after this and uh, <clears throat> that was also one of the reasons why i chose to leave in 10 years and did not take an extension up to 14 because i had to restart on a new career track uh maybe in some other company like all my counterparts who joined it who joined some other industry you know they were far ahead in their careers and they are just growing they might just become ceo after 30 years but that was not the possibility for me so uh and career switch basically in your 20s this is the most fruitful period so when you give your 20s to services and yes you pick up a lot of skills that you would have never learned outside but at the same time you switch careers when you are in your 30s which is uh, a risky affair not everybody is able to switch very smoothly uh, so yes from that point of view i think this is a very good step like this is a, a full fledged career where you can have the aspirations of the uh, impacts your aspirations dreams and motivation to work uh, so yes i think it's it's a great step and uh, women would have a lot more uh, to look up to a lot more to dream of when they join through nda right and uh, you know vidisha you came from a foggy background and uh, ragini you are not going to come from a foggy background so your your father is uh, you know he's from the corporate and uh, ragini's mother is a housewife and a great painter but then you know she so ragini how was it what was the reaction of your parents when you said you wanted to join the uh, nda and you wanted to fill the form actually they were quite supportive and they motivated me and uh, they said it's very nice that you want to follow your dreams and aspirations so they uh, like they supported me and uh, they provide me with all the materials and they also uh, like guide me how i can move further and with the preparation for the exam and they also help me like throughout the uh, throughout uh, throughout this journey like they also help me by uh, by you know uh, by gathering more information how i can study more appropriately for the exam and um, i think that's wonderful you know 
because uh, if uh, parents who have not seen the services if they have this sort of sort of an attitude so it's very nice you know the girl gets motivated uh, bidisha when you were taking your entrance exams and uh, you know when you were wanting to get into the uh, navy were you uh, did you do a degree in btech or uh, what was your degree uh, when you joined uh, yes i was pursuing btech uh, it was btech in electronics and telecom and uh, i I joined the services through the university entry scheme. So this is generally in the seventh semester of your BTEC when uh, the team from the Indian Navy comes to your campus and then they conduct this interview and group discussion and then a shortlist comes and from there the SSB happens. So I had already cleared my SSB when I was in the eighth semester. So I really haven't worked in the corporate sector. As soon as I completed my BTEC, I joined uh, the Indian Navy. so and the training happened in the indian naval academy right and uh, for the benefit of these young girls uh, when you went for your training into the naval academy did you have a separate course for girls and a separate course for men or was it a joint course it was a joint course and uh, we were trained it was it was a it was equal training for both like for the short service commissioned officers like the uh, men who had joined through the same entry uh, it was the same we had a 6 months basic training course and followed by which we had one year of specialized training so i joined the logistics cadre which was more of uh, operations and supply chain where we look after budget and procurement of machinery and other things to keep the operational platforms ops and uh, at all times so uh, basically uh, it was one and a half year of training uh, 6 months at the indian naval academy which was basic compulsory for all and then one year of specialized training and uh, were the were there parameters which were different for men and different for women getting trained or you had uh, the same parameters and parameters were absolutely the same during the training we have run together uh, and everything happened together whether it is swimming or jumping from you know the 7 meter high 10 meter high everything was same yeah so ragini you understand it's going to be you know you will be not a separate set of girls training separately you're going to be a set of men and uh, women together training with the same parameters so boys of your uh, class who also apply will be training alongside so you know it will have to be more of having the same physical strength it will be more of having the same sort of uh, you know uh, qrs which are required so does that mean that a petite girl vidisha like ragini will need to strengthen herself um uh, i would like to add here i mean uh, i was not very much into physical sports and all these things before i joined the navy and i had my own set of apprehensions before the ssb and even before joining the academy um there are certain things that would always help in building up your stamina like uh, running a bit getting into a little physically active lifestyle in case you have not been uh, following that kind of lifestyle Uh, there were certain women in our course who were very good runners who knew like they had been into running swimming all of this i knew swimming and uh, running was something i used to go for running with my father but not for such long distances so yes i did increase my stamina i worked on my stamina for uh, for a while before joining the academy but none of it actually prepares you completely for what is going to happen at the academy because uh, the routine is really tough there you rarely find time to eat also it's like you're rushing from one class to another you wake up and then there is pt then there is parade then you are studying uh, then there's swimming there's boxing there would be so many things going on together but uh, you know now when i look at it uh, when you basically i think when we did it all together all of us women in my batch we were 70 women and it was i think one of the largest batches of the navy but together i think we did it we did all of it i mean it wasn't like and in the end of it we felt like superheroes uh, frankly speaking because we would have never imagined that we would have done all this you know we have we would run so many kilometers we would learn firing guns and all of these things so we really uh, i think outdid ourselves in the end and we felt really proud of ourselves 
so uh, i think it's just a matter of uh, self confidence and with the right kind of mindset i mean we would always remind ourselves of why we are there in the academy why we joined the forces whenever we uh, felt a bit too tired uh, we would just tell ourselves you know it is all for that uniform because it was a dream for all of us and uh, you know after you complete the training on uh, 4th december when the the passing out parade happens you know your parents come there and uh, you know they put on the stripes on your shoulders and it's such a proud moment so we would always use that to motivate ourselves that you know we really need to get through this and we will be able to get through this so it was a lot of team work and that is when i think i also realized why ssb focuses so much on team work you know people doing things together because i think individually nobody would have been able to do or accomplish all these tasks but because we kept on motivating each other and kept on uh, you know uh, supporting each other uh, we were able to do it together so all of us in the end we and it really uh, like we are friends for life now because of that phase because of those tough times in which you train together and you go through all those hardships and adversities together you just bond at that level i mean uh, there are school friends that you would have made in kg and primary and these people are like at a completely different level so i experienced it like we became friends at a totally different level so they become your family for those 6 months you are not in touch with your parents with any you don't even have the time so these are the people who become your family so yes i mean it was uh, an experience of a lifetime i don't know uh, which other institution will give somebody that kind of an exposure of an or an experience and frankly speaking it made me fearless that training i think after that i felt i could do anything in life i can take risks whether it is physical mental career any kind of risk because it really makes you strong and brave at heart yes i think that is wonderful you know ragini i think this is something which is very great you're hearing from vidisha but uh, tell me one thing you are in school and in grade 12 and you have your friends what is the general reaction of girls of your class uh, and various sections of your class onto this uh, opening of girls into the nda they were also quite into uh, into um, uh, learning about uh, 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 that nda opened the gates and like they were also quite uh, excited and thrilled that uh, um, that but tell me one thing excitement is fine how many have filled the form most of them actually didn't because uh, our school is not uh, you know it, it, like uh, it's not an army school or most of the people are actually didn't apply that didn't much apply. but let me tell you one thing ragini 90% of the men and men who go into the forces do not come from army backgrounds so they have you know the it's the glitter and the glamour of the olive green which gets civilians into the you know fact into the forces but which means that uh, it does require bidisha a lot of uh, you know awareness to be created amidst the parents because these girls are at a stage where if the parents do not tell you they do not know much about it so i think there uh, the forces do need to have an awareness drive uh, you know so that the parents gay are made aware of this fact you know what happens nowadays with online teaching and uh, 90% parents uh, you know the newspapers are not uh, what they are reading because they all are thorough professionals they don't have time for anything extra so what happens is in this case they don't know and the time has gone away mm -hmm. so either schools also i think should come ahead and uh, you know they should have uh, orientations towards various careers so that when the child goes into 12th knows that they have these careers and if there's something new like nda the schools can always have their classes for these class 12 students that okay you have another career you know where you can join or something like that so i think the girls also need to have these awareness drives given to them both by uh, the homes as well as by schools and uh, how can we as i as a journalist know how i can put put into it how can you as a former officer feel that uh, you can contribute to this sort of thing um i think uh, in today's time uh, the good part is that there's a lot of social media and i think the youngsters are there on all the platforms 
so i think we just need to reach out to them and make them aware using these platforms be it youtube be it uh, instagram be it you know because they spend a lot of time on these platforms so i think the easiest way to reach uh, to them with this information is through these platforms so uh, i remember a lot of people uh, like on linkedin when i created in the courses you're not allowed to have social media you're not allowed to be on social media platform so that is a part of the career that you're not supposed to have social media handles but when i retired and i created my uh, portfolio on linkedin and then i saw that a lot of people actually approached me a lot of uh, college students even school students like i was surprised why are they on linkedin but they were there and they asked me questions related to entrance examination and uh, life in the navy and i was actually very happy to see the interest in people basically people are interested uh, they are just looking for information and reliable sources of information uh, the other problem is there are too many sources of information so maybe they want to hear it from somebody authentic uh they want the information to come from an authentic source so that they can trust the person so whenever somebody would ask me i would always ask them that have you searched or looked on youtube and then they would say that uh, we don't know whether that information is correct or not and that is why we wanted to talk to an actual former officer to get to know the realities of life in the armed forces so i think yes uh, information from authentic sources and then connecting us to them maybe that is a good way of creating uh, uh, that bond uh, between former officers and aspiring uh, people like ragini and uh, it clarifies a lot of doubts uh, because there are a lot of fears in minds of people even those uh, the people that i interact with they also come up with variety of questions i mean uh, all kinds of questions come up so it is only when somebody answers those questions that those people actually find the courage to apply to these jobs and uh, even uh, people did not even know the difference between non commissioned and commissioned ranks are they applying for an officer level entry or are they applying for a, a jawans level entry or a sailor level entry even that isn't clear to a lot of people like in my organization itself uh, uh, there was this person who had some uh, 94% i think in 12 but he joined as a sailor in the navy so i actually asked him did you know about the entries and he did not know about the entries he joined through a different entry and then we were uh, preparing him for uh, cw entry in the navy also if, even if you join as a non commissioned uh, at a non commissioned rank you can uh, go on to become an officer by clearing a few exams so we were helping him with that so yes a lot of uh, information gap is still there it needs to be bridged and i think sessions like these are the only way through which we can uh, communicate authentic information about the services that is really wonderful you know it's like getting the information from the horse's mouth like like we've got today now ragini the last question is to you and uh, i will leave it open to you if you have a query and you want bidisha to answer it you're free to do it so i had queries about the ssb interview that how can i prepare for it or what steps can i take so uh, that i got to know that it's it's about, it's like it's our honesty and how like we cannot fake it to you know uh, like it's it's upon ourselves how we are and we have to show it in that that's interview. fine that means you've understood so is yeah. there anything else you'd like to ask or shall we uh, uh, you would uh, understand that you understood everything yes yes so that's wonderful i really want to thank both you girls uh, bidisha thank you very much you've taken out, out time from a very heavy schedule we know that you have there and ragini yours i think is maddening you know she doesn't even get her saturday sundays because the competitive exams you know they all have their uh, classes on saturdays and sundays so the all these institutes where you are preparing for other things you know students are preparing for other things also nowadays and nda just came in between so then you know she's also preparing for a lot of other things like a complete batch of the girls who are doing it at the moment so i think uh, you know as and when things progress we have the first batch and uh, then you know it becomes a routine for girls to apply for nda i think it'll be one of those wonderful things to happen where we can get in girls like ragini who would want a query solving we can solve it for them 
whatever little we can do. That's a little we can do, you know, as an all women's organization uh, to help women to come into careers which are male bastions, absolutely. And uh, thank you very much, Bidisha. Thank you very much, Ragini. We take you back to our studios in Cyprus where Chitali is waiting. And uh, thanks, Chitali, for this longish wait. We really enjoyed it. I had thought that I would, uh, you know, focus on four or five questions. I realize it's unending because it's such a lovely session. So I think Chitali, I'm sure, doesn't mind it. Chitali, go ahead. It was really, I enjoyed. I really enjoyed myself. I was a mute spectator, definitely listening to all that Vidisha and Ragini uh, were discussing with you. But the passion that both of them have, Ragini to enter and Vidisha who has covered her 10 years in the, in the in Navy. I mean, girls, you are, you are brilliant. <laughs> I could feel the same passion that I have for journalism when somebody asked me about journalism. And I could see the same in both of you. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, Vidisha, thank you so much. Really, you are very busy right at the moment, we know, but still you gave us your time and you helped Ragini, I'm sure, to all the aspirants, this specific interview and whatever you told to Ragini is going to benefit them a lot to prepare for interview. Thank you so much again. And Ragini, all the best, all our best wishes, ADU's best wishes are with you that you get a success in this exams. Thank you so much, ladies. Thanks. Bye. Have a nice day ahead. Bye -bye. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.